What's up everybody, Brandon Johnson here, and today I'm answering your questions. Let's take a look. So Storage Rack Solutions here is asking, this might sound like a stupid question, but when you go to the C chord in the progression, can you play elements of a C scale and the same when you go to the D chord or must you always play a G scale in the key of G? That's a really good question. And I think you can go either way on this one. So if you're in the key of G, obviously you're gonna be playing out of the G scale, and let's say you go from a G to a C, you can switch to the C scale over the C, or you can actually kind of stay on that sort of G, those G scale shapes, and that'll work just fine as well, because the C chord shares a lot of tones with the G chord, and same with the D chord, because that's the one, four, five chord progression, which is super common in, in a lot of different styles of music. But, you know, because they have so much in common, Generally speaking, you can, you can do either one. So you can either stick to your G scale shapes or you can actually change your scale for whatever chord you're on, more of a modal type approach. If you ever heard of modes, that's kind of more playing with modes is when you go to, you actually change the scale with the chord that you're actually playing. And it's a little bit of a deeper, kind of more in-depth way to solo. But to answer your question, either one will work as long as you're in the key of G. In other words, if the, the song or the progression sort of resolves on a G chord, then you can generally kind of stay in that G, that G scale shape if you want to. So hopefully that helps. And Daniel Para here asks, um, I have a question for you. What strings gauge do you recommend for this style of playing? Uh, I would recommend a, a heavier gauge string. Personally, for me, I think you get the best tone out of kind of a heavier gauge string. Not everybody, that's not gonna be comfortable for everybody to play heavy strings like that. So um, I would say anything between uh, like a 12, maybe you could go as, as high as 11 if you wanted to. Um, but I think if, you, if you're really looking to get that really full, you know, if you're playing a dreadnought and you wanna get that really full bluegrass tone, I would recommend heavier gauge strings and also heavier gauge pick as well. And Jerry Thompson asks, What's, what kind, size, and shape of guitar do I look for? Um, well, it, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you don't necessarily need one specific style or type of guitar to play bluegrass style or blues music. Um, it's, it's really a matter of personal preference. If you wanted to play like a parlor style guitar, you would just get a parlor, more of a parlor style tone out of your instrument, which is really, really cool. And you could play any any tune you want, any instrumental fill tune you want, it would still sound really, really cool. But probably the most common kind of style of guitar is gonna be the, the Dreadnought, the full-size Dreadnought guitar. And that's, that's the one you're gonna see the most, probably uh, bluegrass style pickers playing, so. Um, but again, any, any style and any type of guitar is gonna be fine, as long as it's a decent instrument. If it's, if it's well-built and, you know, if it's a Martin or something a little more high-end, you're gonna get better results. It doesn't really matter what style of guitar it is, more the quality of the instrument itself. And that always comes down to how much it costs usually, so. And Jordan asks, how do you practice to a metronome if you don't understand timing? You know, the metronome is, is a tool that you use to improve your sense of timing and rhythm. And what it does is it gives you a reference point outside of, your, uh, outside of yourself to, you know, sort of hone your ability to keep time because generally, people just kind of feel out the rhythm and the timing the way that they're used to hearing it. And it's not always correct or consistent. You know, when it comes to timing, when you talk about subdivisions, when you talk about the, the space between the beats, that's kind of what, what a metronome helps you, helps you to develop a feel for, is how to kind of make those, those subdivisions, those spaces between the beats as even as possible. And you can build that into your muscle memory and kind of build a, a good sense of timing and rhythm that way. You know, put, put a metronome on and, and play along with it almost as if it's another musician or like, like it's a drummer or something. You know, I heard an interview with Tony Rice one time and he was talking about moving the tempo. You know, even though the, the, a metronome is a static tempo, you can kind of approach it or you can kind of adjust your playing to, to give it a different feel. So you can kind of play more on the front of the beat or you can play a little bit more on the back of the beat. And, and that's a good way to, you know, change the feel of, of your, your playing and, and whatever kind of groove you're trying to create while still maintaining a, a good consistent tempo. Using a metronome, just putting a metronome on and playing along with it 
in a, in a musical way is probably the best way to approach using a metronome. And Airstrip Kid here says, this is awesome. I have a question. I pick with the palm of my hand resting on the bridge. Is this correct? And if not, what should I do to be more steady? Well, that's a good question. And um, what I like to do is I like to play sort of, sort of with my wrist uh, floating on the bridge, but I also tend to kind of, when I'm playing, sort of not fully anchor, but just kind of rest my, my little finger on my right hand or maybe my, my ring finger on my right hand, just sort of resting it there. And that allows me to, sometimes I will actually anchor my wrist, but not always. Sometimes my wrist kind of floats, but that will just give you a little bit of control. And, and again, you're not, it's not like totally solidly anchored there, but it just gives you a little bit of, of stability um, to kind of, you know, anchor yourself or, or to give yourself a way to feel more stable with your with your picking hand. If you look at a guy like Dan Crary, for example, who's very firmly planted, his wrist is very firmly planted on that bridge, and he has great results from that. And then you look at a guy like you know Norman Blake or Doc Watson, who's who's almost floating on the bridge, and and really it's about what's most comfortable for you because whatever the most comfortable way for you to pick is 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 going to be is going to give you the best results. So. You know, just experiment with, the, you know, I've experimented with, with all of those techniques, with the floating, with the anchoring, you know, I, I experiment with that stuff all the time. You know, you just find what works for you and continue to, to do that. And, and if it's not working for you, if you're noticing tension or if you're having some kind of issues with your wrists or muscles or whatever, then try a different technique or try elements of different techniques and kind of create your own technique because no one anatomically is going to be identical to you. No one's wrists and, and hands and fingers are going to be the same size as yours. So you really just want to kind of experiment with what feels right for you and just continue to practice. You know, that's, that's really all there is to it. And here, Najliobo1 says, quick question, should we get the song up to fast speed before moving on to the next measure or learn the whole of the song at slow speed, not just this song, any bluegrass song? So if you're learning a melody, I think it's important to start slowly, obviously, to, to get the notes, to get the actual fingerings down. And then if, if you find that, you know, if you're doing one of the backing tracks at one speed and then you go to the next speed and you find that it's a little too fast, you can continue to learn the song and, and just kind of come back and do your, spe your speed building exercises later. That's totally fine. So you could, you could actually work through an entire lesson just at a slow tempo if you wanted to, just to get the melody and the fingerings down and then once you learn the actual tune, come back and try to, you know, and, and start to try to build up your speed. And that's, that's totally a reasonable approach, I think. So here's a question from Richard Vaughn. He says, hello, I just had a question about the music tab. I'm wondering how to determine when a note is played on its own or pinched with another note at the same time. Would the number be on the same line above and below each other if played at the same time? And if on their own, would they be staggered on the tab? That's exactly right. You, you, just, you just answered your own question. Um, when, when you're playing a chord, for example, when, when multiple strings are being strummed or plucked at once, then they're going to be, the notes are going to be stacked on top of each other in the tab. And then, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a timeline, right? That's moving kind of left to right. So if they're played individually, if the notes are plucked individually, then they're going to be on different lines, but they're also going to be staggered slightly depending on the note interval. So like a 16th note is going to be closer together than an eighth note and a quarter note and so on. So the, the, it's just like sheet music, right? Where, you know, if, if you're playing a chord, then all of the notes are going to be stacked on top of each other vertically. If you're, if you're playing individual notes, they're going to be more spread out horizontally and there's going to be gaps between each one that indicate the, the timing of the note and also the stem notation as well indicates the timing. And Paul, Paul Lisney here says, I noticed that the notation is written straight equal time for each note, but that in reality there is a bounce to it when played. I've seen this in other bluegrass lesson videos. Is all bluegrass played like this? And if so, or if not, how does the note reader know the proper feel? Well, that's a good question. And you know, I've noticed a lot that, um, you know, bluegrass charts are often written in 2-4 time, which is cut time. And I, I prefer to write my tabs in 4-4 four, four time, which is more of a kind of the classical sort of jazz tradition 
traditional type of way of writing sheet music. Um, for me, I like 4-4 time because when I, that's, that's how I conceive of the music personally when I'm performing it or practicing it or jamming or whatever because I tap my foot on the quarter notes. So for me, there's four beats to a measure, one, two, three, four, and a lot of times with the bluegrass stuff, if you're playing really, really fast notes, you're playing 16th notes, eighth notes, and quarter notes. So for me, you know, I like that style of notation better. It works better for me. I think it's more condensed. You can, you can see, you can kind of conceive of the melody on paper easier when it's in 4-4 four, four because it's in a sort of a condensed form. So, you know, either one is fine. If you're doing 2-4 cut time or if you're doing common time 4-4, four, four, you know, you can interpret the music the same way. It's just a, a different way of notating it. So, um, and, and you mentioned, you know, how do you know the proper feel? The way I know the proper feel is by tapping my foot along to the music. So you're either going to have, you're, you're either going to be tapping generally on the on beat, right, with your foot. So the one is usually what I'm tapping on my foot. But sometimes you'll, you'll tap your foot on the off beat with the bass. So, you know, really the best way to establish the feel of bluegrass music is to listen to bluegrass music. And Brock Pate here says, which pickups are you running in your acoustics? This one, the Alvarez has, has the stock Alvarez pickup in it. It says System 600T MK2. Um, in this, the Madsen here, which has a broken string right now, uh, this has the Stage Pro Anthem pickup. Stage Pro Anthem, True Mic Technology, LR bags. So that, this one has the LR bags. And Elizabeth says, I've only taken a few lessons and the teacher stressed not wrapping my thumb over the top of the neck. Is that not universal for all styles? Um, no, I, I don't think, I don't think it's universal. I don't think anything is universal for all styles. Um, it's, it's a, it's a matter of personal preference. So I think what you're talking about is like, if you're playing an F chord and you're, you're wrapping your thumb around like this to hit that low, that low bass note there on the F chord, you don't have to do that. If, if it doesn't work for you, if it's not comfortable for you, if your hands aren't that big and you can't really get around that then by all means play the, just play the bar chord or even, you know, a chord like this is fine as well. But no, I, you don't necessarily have to do this. And in fact, it's more about what's comfortable for you and not necessarily what's universal or what's right and wrong. Because every guitar has different size necks and everybody has different size hands. So I think it's, it's totally reasonable to, you know, not wrap your thumb around it too. I think either technique is just fine as long as it's comfortable for you. And Troy says, out of curiosity, do you normally finger pick with two fingers? Uh, no, I, I, sometimes I finger pick with two fingers, sometimes I finger pick with three fingers, but r usually not more than that. Two fingers or three fingers for me. So uh, my index and my thumb or my, my index and my thumb and my middle finger, and then occasionally my ring finger, but usually not my, my little finger. And Eduardo Rodriguez says, what string gauge do you use? I kind of already answered that one. I use HD lights, which are a combination of medium and light. And Elixir makes those, and, and those are the strings that I use. And they just, I love them. They work for me. So um, 13s, mediums are usually too heavy for me. Um, and 12s are like too light for me. So I like to be kind of in between with the HD lights. Ooh. 